What's your story? Middle. Your plan. If I know you got a plan, I am more likely to invest in you. And I will tell you, I will tell you, today, I get asked to do this a lot. I can't do it. I can't do it every day. I gotta work, right? I gotta write my books and make money. I got a family I gotta take care of. I gotta figure out where I can be, maybe, useful, or the most useful. When I hear Kristen calls me and says, hey, can you do this thing? I had questions. I said, who are these kids, right? Kristen gets back to me. Erasmus, this is the school. These are the kids, the young men and women. This is what they are in school for. I said, hey, you know what? Hospitality and tourism, I dig that. That's a good gig. You're always going to be able to get a good job. And you're always going to be able to make a living. And the harder you work at it, you can get really good, like Aisha, and make a lot of money. Okay? I came here today because you guys already have a good story going on. You got a plan. You got the middle worked out. You're in the right program. That's a good middle to me. I say, all right, well, maybe I'll come. I'll just throw it out my thing, and maybe they can use it. The end. The end is your dream. And I want you to dream huge. Don't, don't dream small. Dream like there, like where you want to be. When I hear that, I want to be filthy rich, I say, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's exactly what you want to be. Because here's the deal, and I'm giving you a little hint here for what's going to really get me excited about hiring you. It's a hint. What happens when you have tons of money? Pro you got problems. It gets complicated. Yeah. What is it good? What's better? More than enough or not enough? I think so. I think so. Too much? You can work it out and figure out what to do with it. When you got too much, you got extra, right? Yeah. What do you do with the extra? Save it. Give it away. You give it away. Now is it always is it always like reaching into your pocket and giving out money? What else can you give when you're taken care of? You can invest in your community. How? What's your name? Sharifa. How do you Sharifa. say again? Sharifa. Sorry, I got it. I got bad news. Sharifa. Starting programs. You're going to start a program in your community. What do you need to start a program? Money. Yeah, you need money, right? Volunteers. Say again. Volunteers. Volunteers. Well, guess what? I do some volunteer work. I work on an ambulance. I'm an EMT. I'm with a volunteer ambulance corps. I gotta tell you, it's hard finding the what to go work on an ambulance. Well, you guys be a nice courage. You don't need a lot of courage. You just need to like be calm to be an EMT. Okay? You gotta just like bring it down. Don't try to be a hero. But here's the thing. I got a wife. I got two dogs. I got a kid on the way. I got family. I got a lot going on. Plus, I got to make a living writing these books. I wake up really early. I wake up at 3.30 every day. And I'm in bed by 10. So if I am that on the clock, what do I not have a lot of? Like, time. I can't waste time. I can't waste time. So everything I do, I try to make it important. Sharifa says, when you have a lot, when you're taken care of, you can start giving away. You can give away money. Sharifa says, you can reach out to your community. 
You have time to do that when you have money. And I gotta tell you, nothing feels so good. Nothing. As being able to help somebody out a little bit. Just a little bit. You don't have to save the world. You help that one person a tiny little bit. You are, that is a hero. How can I help you? How can I help you? What's your name? Maybe I can help you. What's your name? What's your name? Shalexia. Shalexia, what's your dream? Yeah. To be successful and happy. Yeah, okay, you will. You will be successful and happy. What's your plan? How do you get there? Good. And after finishing up school, I'm going to start my career. And then from there, go up here. Good. Got it. School, career, work hard, move up. Move up the ranks, right? What career? Well, I know. I have, I have different careers, but... I want to hear them all. <laughs> Shalexia's got more than one dream. I like that. Go ahead. Good. And then I want to do culinary, and then I'm, I like dancing, so I want to do something with that. So I'm having a lot of dreams going on. Dancing, culinary arts, law. You like all three the same? I like culinary and dancing more. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to pick culinary mm -hmm. right now, all right? You know who Bobby Flay is? Mm -hmm. You do, because you're into that whole thing, right? Tell us, tell us all, Alexia, who, who Bobby Flay is. He's a nice and loud. Stand up. <laughs> stand up. You gotta stand up and tell your story every single day of your life. Start now. Okay, Bobby Flay is a culinary chef. He's been on Top Chef, Iron Chef. Tell them. And he's won lots of times. And a lot of people know him for being one of the best chefs out there. Okay, and I've seen that show. Mm -hmm. I've seen Bobby Flay's show. Tell me about him, his personality. Mm -hmm. He's very hardworking. Mm -hmm. You ask me, he's arrogant. Okay, <laughs> arrogant, and I'm thinking of a word that starts with C. Has confidence? Yeah, definitely confident, right? Very successful, right? Mm -hmm. I'm moving over here so you talk to them too. Bring it out. Open it up. <laughs> I want you to tell me more about his personality. Well, I don't know him personally. Right. <laughs> right. But let me ask you, where does he go in? Like, does he just go into the restaurant that's all set up perfectly? No. Where does he go? He goes where it needs improvement. There you go. He goes where there's a problem. Mm -hmm. When he leaves that restaurant, how is he? It's better than it was before. Absolutely. Absolutely, right? Yeah. How do you think that makes him feel when, let's say you do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Let's say you and I should team up. She's like this big broadcast journalist now. And she says, oh, you know what? Let's see, I got an idea for a show, you know? Why don't we do this show together, okay? It's a culinary arts show. And you go in to places in Flatbush, and you guys can make this show with your iPhone. You can start now. Going in to the local Slices Right, or Ray Ray and Eddie's, or whatever your pizza joint is, <laughs> out in Flatbush. My people are from Woodhaven, you know where that is? Yeah. A little bit east of you guys, right? On the J, 76th Street? You know what I'm talking about, Eldridge Lane? You got, what line are you guys on? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. You can start in your local community, right? Mm -hmm. Going in and taking what you learned from school and trying to help people do a better job managing their business, growing their business. How are you going to feel helping that guy whose pizza store is going down? He's going to lose his business. What happens when you lose your business? You go broke. What happens when you go broke and you got a family? Depression. 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 Alan, right? Depression. We don't like that because guess what? Depression's a disease. It's like 
you can spread like a cold. You want to bring your community up. You got to cheer somebody up, right? You go in there, you go in there, you help that guy out. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? His business is so good now, he's busy. He can't run the shop by himself anymore. So what does he do? Hire. He hires people. He hires me. I'm broke. I need a job. Wow, now i got money coming in. I can take care of my family. You see, mm -hmm. when you have a lot, you have an obligation to give a lot. When you got a big dream, you got to let that dream spill over the top and let everybody else get wet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get their feet wet. Aisha, can you come up here for a second? Can we give it up for Aisha? She's got something. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. You're close. You're real close. I'm, I'm being straight with you. You got a great personality. And I truly can see you running the show on Channel 7. Am I, seriously, how many of you think she can do it? Right. <laughs> they believe in you. They believe in you. Here's the thing. I don't know you. Except for how long? Am I going over? Half hour. Mm -hmm. okay. I know you for half an hour, right? I got a good vibe from you. Now you got to seal the deal. You come in to my office. I have talked to, you're coming in towards the end of the interviews. I've talked to 80 people who want this great gig. And I'm like, man, I can't tell one from the next. The only way you're going to get my attention is if you knock me flat with your story. So I come in, I'm trying to be polite, right? I'm like, got to stay awake with my coffee, right? Um, I got a meeting in like 15 minutes. Um, sorry I gotta run out, but what's your uh, what's your story? Why are you here? Well, so I was in a drama program for three years and I really wanted to be on stage and really wanted to be an actress. So I applied for high schools that wanted to like have the profession of drama, but I didn't get in. And I ended up in a school that didn't have my talent, but failure was not an option. So now I'm here and I'm pushing myself because I want to do what I want to do. Good. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You got. I like that. Because you're telling me something that you don't quit. That's huge. That's a good part of your story. Okay? That thing I said before about your dream getting so big, it starts to spill and other people get their feet wet. Go to the end of your dream. You're so successful. Right? What are you going to do with all that money? I are you going to keep it all for you? No. Okay. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to give money to people, like start schools, so people can have a story to tell. Great. <laughs> hey, listen. I'll tell you what. Right there. None of the the other 99 people. They didn't say that. I guarantee you right now. They didn't say that. They went in and they said, this is where I'm from. I went to this school. It's always been my dream to be a broadcast journalist. Um, you know, I love to be engaged with people. I love to connect with people. Um, I love to hear stories. And, uh, you know, you see my grades and you think, I mean, I'd be really good. I got a good personality. I'm on time. All that kind of stuff, right? Well, like, yeah, 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 that's all good. And then Aisha comes in and says, yeah, here's the thing. When I get where I want to be, I'm going to start a school of broadcast journalism to help kids like me get exposed early on. I'm going to use my story, my story of success, to inspire, who said the next generation? Yeah. What's your name again? Leslie. Leslie Ann. You're brave. You're very brave. That thing with the dog. 
The, the fact that you can talk about that, that's good. That's a good thing. And you can talk about it in a way where I don't see any bitterness in you. You know what I mean? That's a gift. What's your dream? Why? Because I tell my stories and I think. Good. And what? And what? Like, what's your favorite actor or actress? Tyler Perry. Say again. Tyler Perry. Ella Perry. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. And my again, my ears. I love him too. Tyler Perry. No, you you stay with me for one second. I'm not letting you go just yet. Tyler Perry. Why? Why do we all like to go to Tyler Perry movies? He was tell stories. He's funny. He tells a good story, right? He makes us do what? Yeah. Learn too. Learn? What do you learn? Learn a lot of life lessons about like different life experiences, different point of views. What's your name? Christina. Christina. Nice. Nice. So, so what kind of life lessons? What's the last one you learned? The Tyler Perry movie. Um, careful who you trust. Careful who you trust. Don't park in somebody else's parking spot. <laughs> Say that again. Don't park in somebody else's parking spot. Don't park in somebody else's parking spot. That can get you killed. That'll save your life. Very true. <laughs> you make it about Leslie Ann making people happy. You walk in. Anybody know uh, what Juilliard is? Yeah. Yeah, you know about that, right? <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. It doesn't matter. Like one day you might get in, one day you won't. But here's the thing, as long as you have in your heart when you walk in there, I guarantee you they're gonna say to you, hey, so who are you, tell us about you. They sit there like, you know, with their notebooks, let's stand, tell us about you, right? What do you say? Um, I am here because. I am here because I'm interested in being an actress. Then you need to stand up if you wanna be an actress, to get in front of people, and do what? Um, act. Act, and? Tell a story. Tell a story that does what? Impress someone. Impresses people and makes them do what, if you're Tyler Perry? Keep their interest in that. Make people laugh. I, I am here because I want to make people happy. Those are the best stories that you can tell. If you tell me a story like, I want this, I want that, I want the other thing, I get it, and I want you, I want to hear that, I want to hear that, I want to know that you know what you want, but I want to, I want to be working with people who take the time to think of other people, to think of the rest of us. I want to make people laugh, I guarantee you, when you go in for your audition, for whatever it is, if you're going to try to go to acting school or whatever, trying out for a part, just walk up there and be real truthful. I'm here because I want to make people happy. I guarantee you, that's so pure and so simple and so easy to understand and so true. That kind of truth, people see that. I'm going to go to the election just for a second. Now look, I think both those guys are good men. Barack and Romney, right? But here's the thing, and is this just me? But when Barack talks, I feel like he's talking to me. I feel like he's telling me a story, and he's talking from his heart. I felt like Romney was trying to tell me what I wanted to hear. And I'm not saying that, that he's a bad guy. I think he had his heart in the right place. But it wasn't sincere. And what happened to him? Yeah. He's looking for a job right now. <laughs> okay? Barack's got a good one for four years. You be sincere like that, you just stand and just tell it how you feel, you're going to go places. I got like one minute for Aisha. I want you to just take that story, talk about the end now. I, I, I jumped in, I jumped the gun for you and said what you were going to do with all your money. I just want you to think right now that you have, you have made $50 million. You've got all kinds of side businesses going on because you're, you're a celebrity, you're a personality, okay? And you got $50 million bucks. 
Just start telling me what you're going to do with that money. Um, so, we're going to Brooklyn. With out of 50 million, I take a generous amount, 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> 10 million dollars is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Okay. So, I go into my neighborhood, which I grew up, and the places I moved from, because I've been around Brooklyn a lot. Mm -hmm. I make I take a school that has like no opportunities, like nobody thinks that anything can happen, and make something out of it. And then one day, hopefully, I go to school, and somebody that has been through failure comes to me and has their story to tell. You got it. You got it. Like ninety-nine percent. Do exactly what you did. But use specific examples. Tell me a story. What school are you going to go into? Make it up. Make up the kid's name. I'm gonna go to the ABC school. <laughs> Make it real. I'm gonna go to Erasmus. Okay. I'm gonna go back to where I went to. I'm gonna go to Erasmus and I'm gonna talk to Bob. Who's <laughs> Bob? Bob is a ninth grader yeah. who likes to talk in front of class. He's yeah. a comedian and reads very well. Okay, he's good. He's got skills. What's his What's his like home life? Why are you worried about Bob? worry about Bob because his mom's not working. Okay. His dad is struggling with his mom. Okay. So what does that do to Bob? It makes Bob like so depressed and he feels like so pessimistic <coughs> like anything good can happen to him. Like nothing good can happen to him. So Bob's got skills. He's depressed because he's got problems at home. How are you going to help him? What can you do? Well, first I'm going to get Bob into like the journalism, like journalism. Yeah, journalism class and let him like practice for a while to like make his skills develop flourish so that he can be flourish. like flourish got it it's great <laughs> <laughs> and then when his like finished product is done I want him to like come to me I want to see him like a different side I don't want to see him depressed anymore I want to come to me I want to see it in his eyes the passion in his eyes and tell me that's what he wants to do what is that passion? Seeing that passion, what does that do to you? It makes me like bring me back to the passion I had, where I'm standing here today. Telling the story. Am I gonna give her the job? Yes. You're right. I am gonna give her the job. <laughs> give it up for <laughs> each. Paul, we're close to time. Got so it. To okay, see. thanks, Christy. Do you guys have any questions for me? Yes. Yeah. Tell me again. Rakima, right, okay. How do you manage your time? Very, very carefully. But, like, how do you work while you're doing it? I keep, you know, look, I got one of these things too, right? I don't really use this. I got one of those old fashioned day books with all the lines on them like this, so I can open it up and I can see the whole week, right? And I have a Google Calendar, and my wife and I link up on the same calendar. So I can see what she's doing for the day, and I can see what I'm doing. I think the key to managing your time is looking at a bigger picture. Not just the one day. Yeah, you gotta live in the moment, but take the beginning of the week, the time to look at what the, the week is like. I think the key is organizing your information about where you're going to be and what you're going to do. And for example, like for today, right, in my email, Chris and I went back and forth, maybe like we, we swapped about 20 emails. This has been planned for like months. I have a folder, Center for Fiction. Breaking it down into subgroups. The event that I have to do has its own folder. It's part of a bigger folder, workshops. And then I, I look, I allocate. How many hours am I doing workshops this week? I try, I can really only do about three hours a week. Like, I'm getting on a plane, I gotta be at JFK tomorrow at 8 a.m. 
and I'm flying out to Las Vegas. There's an English teachers conference there. And I got an itinerary from my publisher, Penguin. They organize that information so well that all I have to do is somebody comes to the door, car, I gotta know that I gotta be there at that time. From there on in, I'm on automatic. They tell me where to go, they're gonna pick me up and they're gonna take me home. I give them three days that I'm gonna be gone. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's another part of organizing your time. Trusting the people that you're working with that they, that they have their organization down. So I don't have to manage the whole event. I just gotta be at the event and be present, right? Well rested, have my energy, make sure I have my Cheerios, right? Ready to rock, yeah? And let them tell me what to do. I think it's about organizing information and not panicking and don't do too much. Don't do too much. Um, yeah, but, but, go ahead. But as a high school student, yes. like, you can never not do too much. And stuff is like, okay, you're like you you know what's coming. We don't know what's coming. Okay. So how do we deal with that? Okay, what do you what are you what are some things that have surprised you before? APS. 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 Get dirty looks. Get dirty looks. You went that way. You went around this way. I'll get them for you. Is this your English teacher? No. Oh. That's what you did. What's your name? Camille. Hey, Camille. Okay. You do an amazing job. You beautiful people. Beautiful people. Here's the thing. Why is Camille giving you the APS? No, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry, so what's your name? Matthew. Matthew. Why are Matthew and Camille... Oh, man. Matthew just gave me an ABS essay for history. Camille's giving me... Say again? Essays. Essays. Why? Why? Two? Yes. To help you get to where you want to go. Nobody wants to make you suffer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I suffer. I have to read like 150 of them. This is just your fault. <laughs> Here's the thing. Matthew's right. He's got to read every single one of them. So he's going to be really careful about what he gives you, right? Yes. If he gives you something, trust. Trust. You know him now, this is November. So you've been with Matthew for three months, right? By now, by now, you know one another a little bit, right? There's a foundation there. There's trust. Let him do his thing. You do your thing. Budget. How much, how much time are you going to do on homework? Look, how critical is homework at this point in your life? Very critical. Right? For whatever comes next to you, Having that degree in your pocket is very, very important. It's critical, right? So right now, focus on the short-term dream in the moment, right? I am going to focus on the essay. I am going to focus on homework. I figure, I'm looking at, I got the AP essay. I got trigonometry. I got five other things. I got to do four hours of homework tonight. I got three the next night, and if I do four, Next Tuesday, I think I can get it. I think I'm going to be pretty solid on my homework. Block it out. Block it out. Take that time and fill it with homework. I guarantee you're going to have a little bit extra. Do extra. Do extra. And you'll be building. You'll have cash in the bank. You'll have stuff done so you have more time later to do more homework. Because at the end of the year, June 12th, when do you guys finish? 24th, June 24th. All right. No, May 5th? June 27th. All right. When that comes, that's it. After June 27th, you got two months, right? You're not going to think about 
what happened before during those two months. You're going to think about the future. The things that aren't fun to do, be zen about it. Don't think about the pain. If it's something that you know is going to help you, look, I, I'm tempted all the time to go, ah, this sucks. I gotta be on, like, I'm going to be traveling from, I'm getting picked up at, I think, 4.30 tomorrow morning. And I'm not going to get to Las Vegas until, like, it says 11, 11 o'clock in the morning over there, right? I mean, I'm going to be traveling for, like, 10 hours. They don't fly me first class. I'm a coach, you know, like all crammed up with some guy who's, like, leaning on me. And he's got a cold, and he's, like, listening to his iPod so loud. It's like, why do you even have earphones? You know? That sucks. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I got good audio books on my iPod. I sit and I breathe and I listen and I don't think about the fact that it sucks. It does, but I don't think about that. The things that you can do for yourself, simple little things like I acknowledge that this sucks, but I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'm not saying if something is bad, if something bad is happening, you got to fix it. I'm not talking about that. If you feel that there's a threat, or you're in, in imminent danger, or you're in a bad situation or a bad relationship, I'm not saying just go, oh, this sucks, I'm going to endure it. Don't do that. We're talking about the things that are beneficial to you that don't feel good to do, like the APS, the extra one that you get assigned. That's only going to help you. Every essay you write, you become a better essay writer. It's a great question. Nobody asked me that question. Yes? Um, how often does inspiration hit when you write these books? I'm inspired right now. I'm inspired by your dreams, right? Lawyer, culinary arts, and dancing. I think to myself, wow, this is a really interesting person with a lot of different things going on. This is a person who is engaged in life. That gets me inspired. I'm inspired when I engage with people. You can be inspired anytime. If you're looking for inspiration, oh, okay, I gotta sit down, I gotta write this great story, I gotta write the next Twilight, right? <laughs> Doesn't work. You gotta go with, with your life, right? You gotta go with what engages you, right? You can be inspired anytime. You got a follow up on that? Yeah, I was just saying, how about um, I tell you my story, you write it down, it's going to be private. I like that. That's, that's a good thing. You going to give me a good story? All right. You get, you get me a good story. You going to make me a lot of money? Because I like money too. Yeah, right? We all like money. We got common ground. We both like money. <laughs> Yeah, tell a good story. You're gonna get a lot of money. 